you ever heard that uh, looks can be deceiving? Well, this is definitely deceiving. You see that sun? You see how bright the part looks? Looks super, super sunny, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll get in my car and show you the truth. <laughs> looks are definitely deceiving. It is not <laughs> that warm out here. It's pretty darn cold. But at least I get to see the sun. Yeah, you're not tricking the sun. I know it's cold out here. So everybody check that out. <laughs> see the temperature there? It's getting cold. Hey everybody, this is Chris at Zenark Reptiles. Thank you for joining me again. I'm sitting here at the park. Um, kind of cold, actually super cold. Um, the sun's the only reason I could be out here. Anywho, um, today I'm gonna talk to you about a recessive, uh, the recessive gene. So you're wanting to start a new collection. You're new to breeding reptiles, I mean breeding ball pythons, sorry about that. Um, and you were wondering if you should get visuals or should you get um, heads. And I'm gonna talk to you about that today. And I'm gonna talk to you about something I learned from Billy Rose. This is nothing I've learned. Um, this is his formula and it worked out really well for me. So I'm trying to impart his wisdom uh, for you. So I'll be right back. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell. What that notification bell does for you is let you know when my videos are coming out and you'll be the first to know. Be right back. Welcome back reptile fam. So you're new to breeding ball pythons and you're thinking about trying some recessives. Um, you're kind of wondering if I should get visuals or should I get uh, hets. Uh, me personally, um, I try to keep a, a recessive uh, project going and also a codom project going at all times. Um, I try to focus on mainly one recessive. Here's my um, how I went about it, and I did learn this from Billy Rose. Again, I, like I said earlier, I'm gonna give him the credit when credit's due. Um, recessives um, are definitely where the money is, if you're looking for that, and it's also where the, um, there's a lot more to gain from recessives, in, in my opinion. Codoms are cool, um, don't get me wrong, uh, and also, you know, but recessives is, is to me, that's like, because you, you know, recess is where you have to spend a lot of time to get in there and it takes time and when it's there, it's like your magnum opus. Um, I just personally got into the Sunset program, like Sunset uh, uh, Gene, and I bought me three uh, het females. And my goal is to raise them up and then get me a, a male uh, Sunset, actually a, a visual and bring it to them. So if they don't actually, uh, have sunset uh, um, babies, they'll at least be het for sunset. And that's the way I go is I think if you're gonna get, like, you know, if you wanna know if you wanna get visuals or you wanna get uh, hets, me personally, you get a lot more bang for your buck for getting hets. Now, if you're gonna get hets, you might want to, uh, let me change this, uh, the, the lights get in the way. Anyways, if you wanna get into the hets, um, the way to do it is make sure that you go to a reputable breeder. If you get something like from Ozzy Boyd, you get something from Brian Barczyk, you get something from, uh, you know, like Justin Kaboka, you know for a fact it's gonna be a hit when he says it's a hit because their livelihood is, is staked on their reputation. Um, there's people on Morph Market, I'm not saying they're bad or nothing like that, but you know, they're selling these hats for like 50 bucks or 60 bucks, you know, like say a pied and hat. I kind of question that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to run them down, but you know, they don't make a name for themselves. and. Um, like me, I mean, you guys, if I told, sold you a head, I mean, would you, you don't know me from, you know, from Adam at this point in time, you know, it, it's kind of hard to trust somebody. So when you're buying heads though, make sure you trust this person or like, I know people on Morph Market, some of them guarantee their heads. Anyways, get back to where we're going. So you get a lot more bang for your buck with a head. Um, so if I got, if I spot me one sunset female, um, I raise her up for three years and I breed her with a, a sunset male. 
I'm gonna get probably like five eggs and five sunsets. If I got me three three uh, sunset heads, um, and I breed them, say two of the three go, I've already doubled my eggs, and there's a good chance that I'm gonna have the same amount of of visual babies, and I also have a bunch of heads to work with too. So that's it's a simple logic. Like I said, uh, I learned this from Billy Rose that you can get a lot more for hits than you can from just buying visuals. Now, pides, you know, they're pretty cheap. You know, you might be able to get away with pides and say like, uh, oh, uh, albinos. They're they're pretty uh, cheap. Um, it might be worth getting uh, visuals. But when you start getting into things like uh, the monsoon, um, here, seen that? <laughs> there you go. Uh, the monsoon. Uh, the sunsets, it starts getting a lot of money. And me personally, um, I live here in Yakima, Washington, and uh, the the median house uh, I think average is like five, fifty thousand. And I, me, and my wife make over one hundred fifty thousand. That's counting all our, all our income, um, where I work, uh, where she works, and um, our our side stuff. And I know it may not sound like a lot of you if you live in Seattle or if you live in California, but here that's a really good living. Um, I'd say we're um, middle class, but a little upper middle class where we live here. Um, that being said, this hair will not stay, <laughs> this hair will not stay down. Um, I'm not bragging, but I have a lot more, little more money to spend than someone that maybe starting out. You might be like 19, 20, or 30, you know, and you have a, a brand new family and not a lot of extra money. So it's a way of getting into the project, you know, uh, especially if you have patience, um, getting those, uh, those hats. Um, that's how I do it, and even though I can afford a sunset, I, I just think I give me more bang for my buck. Um, like I said, that, that formula just seems to work. So you want to get into the monsoon project. You know, I think a, a, a hit monsoon, I haven't checked them for a while because I'm not really into the monsoon, but at this point in time, um, but last time I checked, a hit was like uh, 7500 bucks, and I think the visuals are closer to 10 or 12 um, But I haven't checked for like six months, so it might be down a little bit. But I mean, if you're gonna do that, get the, in my logic is to get the hats, cause I can get, you know, two for the same price as one, raise them up and then get me a, a male. And I, I'm already doubled, you know, and even if I don't, even if I don't um, get all visuals, you know, I have a bunch more hats and I can even sell some to uh, make up, you know, my cost. Um, snakes are worth a lot of money as long as you're willing to uh, gamble and put the money into it. Uh, I know uh, Miguel, I had a video not too long ago saying that there's a lot of money in snakes, but you just got to be willing to spend money. Um, you know, if you buy a seven thousand dollar snake and you breed it, you, you definitely can make your money back. Um, but you know, you're starting out, you don't have a lot of money. Um, like I said, you can get you probably four het, uh, four to five het uh, pied females for pretty cheap, and um, you know, probably under at least under a thousand dollars. And I mean, there you go, you got a good colony, and they get you a nice. Uh, visual mail and uh, and breed it with them and I mean you're gonna have lots of pied babies and you can turn around and sell them for you know two to three hundred bucks and that help you get your colony going and I'm not trying to say that you know don't treat these animals like they're you know like their money but it helps you get uh, that money flowing so you can actually you know upgrade your racks and get more snakes and that's the thing is you got to get to the place where you got to invest and take some chances um, that's what I've done personally is I took some chances Got some expensive snakes. Um, one, one of my most first um, snake that I bought that was the most expensive. I bought one from uh, from Aussie Boyd's. It was a thousand bucks. And at that time, my wife's like, "Well, that's a lot of money." And my family, like, that's a lot of money for a snake. Um, but now I'm at the point where you know I'm spending a lot more for snakes because I'm taking that that you know that plunge. Um, at first, this was just a hobby for me, but now I'm starting to get into it, you know, big time. Yeah. <laughs> Looks are deceiving. It's cold out here. Um, but you gotta be willing to take that that plunge. Um, that's where it is. Is like, and I'm telling you, if you do this, the, the heads, um, you get a lot more bang for your buck. You'll 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 thank me. Because um, if you want to be a breeder, you just gotta do it and and take that challenge. You know, just take take the. I guess it's kind of like you know you you don't know how to swim um, and you you don't know how deep the water is. You kind of gotta go out there and kind of feel around. Um, it's kind of scary sometimes, you know, I have a lot more uh, disposable income than some people, but if you, you know, 
I still spend a lot more money <laughs> than most people do too on snakes. And I know it'll pay out for me, you know, it's, it, but I have to take that gamble. Um, you know, and I'm not saying I'm a high roller, but you gotta, you gotta be able to uh, just do it. And that's what you gotta do is you gotta think about the future. If you're just thinking about the now, right now, <clears throat> some people are talking. If you're thinking about the right now, um, you got the wrong mindset for a ball python breeder. It's about time, putting in the, putting in the effort, and um, and uh, thinking about the future. As a ball python breeder, you gotta think about um, about three years ahead, not about what's happening today. So you gotta plan out three years from now. And if that's hard for you, then you're probably not really gonna be a ball python breeder because you gotta think about the future. You can't have your head, uh, you know here because it's going to take time to get to where you want to be don't be afraid to to get into the game just jump in and you know take that plunge um, it's a gamble um, but it's a gamble i believe you're going to win as long as you have a vision and you know you're constantly thinking about what the future is going to hold instead of thinking about now so you see the leaves falling down everywhere cold out here i'll see you next time Really? There's a diesel. There's a diesel truck running around here. It has it in for me. Every 10 seconds it comes around the block. Anyone, everybody. Welcome back, reptile fam. So you're, you're starting out uh, breeding reptiles. Um,